Okay, so we're going to continue. Uh, this is, so we're going to continue 6.1. So now we're going to look at Pythagorean identities. Uh, this is a skill that comes with practice, okay? So there's a few things we have to know, and there's a few things that you're going to have on your formula sheet. Um, I can show you guys. You guys have a copy of the formula sheet, right? Okay, yeah. so pull that out because that's going to be um, handy for you. You guys should all have one. So find it. Okay. Now, yours may not be pink. So this is just kind of one that I have kicking around from last year. It's yellow? Okay. So it changes every year, the color. All right. Now, there's a few here that you need to know, you need to be familiar with. These are the Pythagorean identities. So they basically come from uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Or here, if it's the unit circle, then it's equal to 1. So remembering that sine theta is equal to y and cos theta is equal to x, when we substitute sine and cos in here, we end up getting this. So this is one identity that you need to know. If I were to take this equation and then divide each thing, each term by cos squared, I end up with this, right? And then when I simplify this, this is equal to tan squared, this is equal to 1, and then this is 1 over cos squared, which is secant. So then I get this identity. Now if I divide equation 1 by sine, I end up getting this, which is 1 cotangent and then cosecant squared. Uh, and then you can manipulate these to get you all these other variations of identities as well. All right? Now, these identities are only true when they're squared. Okay? So, for instance, sine theta plus cos theta does not equal 1. It only is for when you've got the square up here and here. Okay? So make sure you're familiar with that. Now, your skills for solving, uh, it's, it's important that you are familiar with order of operations, you're familiar how to make a common denominator, how to rationalize denominator, all those kind of solving skills are, are important. So I'm just going to lightly divide this up and we're just going to work down. Here it says simplify the following expression. So for this first one, what I have to try to do is get this as uh, small and compact as I possibly can. So anytime I have a tan, I'm, gon I'm going to write it as sine over cos. So sine theta over cos theta. That's this tan right here. Then cos is just cos. Leave it as is. Don't change it. Divided by, that's this divide line here. And then secant is 1 over cos, good. Make sure you're writing your thetas in each time, okay, folks? All right. And so 1 over tan, which is cos over sine. Okay. Now, what do you notice is going to happen? Now, imagine this cos has a 1 on t on, on your, underneath, right? So now you've got two fractions, they're multiplying together. What happens with this? Cos and top and bottom get reduced to 1. So now in the numerator, I have what here? Sine theta, and that's it. And over here, what happens with my coses? One on the top, one on the bottom, reduced to 1 over sine. Okay, so this I can write out as sine theta, so multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so now what is that equal to? Sine theta squared, sine squared theta. Now would you say that's pretty simplified? Yeah, okay, so that's where we're going to stop. Can't really do much. Anything else that I do here is going to make it more complicated. Okay, so you see what we're doing? We're just trying to make it compact as possible. So that's how you know where to stop. Okay, I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit on the second one here. 
Okay, so where should we start here? What's this guy going to be written as? Cos x over sine x. Good on catching that now we're using x instead of theta. That also makes sure you're consistent with that. Okay, what's cosecant? 1 over sine x, and then multiply that by cos x is just cos x, right? Okay, um, now here, let's simplify the denominator just so we could see it a little nicer. I'm going to write cos x over sine x, that's this numerator here, and then the denominator is cos x over sine x. Okay, what do you predict the answer is going to be? Because it's the same thing over the same thing, right? Now, if I wanted to go a little further and actually show that step, I can write cos x over sine x times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is sine x over cos x, reduce, reduce, and that equals 1. Nice? Beautiful. For here, this cos on the top reduces with the cos on the bottom. Okay, so now let's go on to part C. All right, so how can I write secant squared? 1 over cos squared theta, and then just write cos theta here over cosecant, which is? 1 over sine theta, and now let's clean this up here. This is going to be cos theta over cos squared theta over 1 over sine theta. Now I'm being very detailed with my steps, right? So this I can simplify to 1 over cos theta. Yeah, I'm being a little excessive with my steps just so that everyone knows where I'm jumping from one place to the next. And then what am I going to do once I'm here? All right, so 1 over cos theta and sine theta over 1. And that simplifies to sine over cos. which is tan theta. So that's simplified. Not too bad? Not too bad. So just be really careful with your solving and your, you know, uh, substitutions and your reducing and be careful with all that stuff. All right. Good times. Homework is right there.